Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chess24 Legends of Chess Tournament with a, uh, this is here from the previous video, uh, with a very nice game between Vishwanathan Anand and Magnus Carlsen. Uh, this is game 4 and the previous 3 games have ended in a draw. They were all very intense and in one game uh, Anand was even sort of in a winning position, uh, but uh, in, in the end the, the game ended in a draw. So here uh, Anand with the white pieces, uh, whoever wins, wins the match or the, if it's a draw they go into Armageddon. So Anand with the white pieces opens with e4 and Magnus uh, when he wants to play a, a safe game, uh, when he doesn't want to you know, give white too many chances goes for his e5 and of course we are most likely to see the Berlin uh, if it was uh, you know, a game that he was planning to win or something most likely he, he would go for the Sicilian. So knight f3, we have knight to c6 and bishop to b5. Rui Lopez is on the board, we have knight to f6 going for the Berlin defense uh, and d3 now. Now we have bishop to c5 by Magnus and now captures on c6. So the, the, uh, the, this is basically today's main line. Knight bd2 and bishop to g4 now. Just continuing development, uh, we have h3 challenging the bishop and bishop to h5. And now knight to c4. So here uh, Anand is doing something different. He he wants the castle queen side. Uh, Black will most likely also castle queen side, and we're gonna have a bit of a different game. So here we have knight to d7, as uh, usually you want to bring this knight to c4 to get a double attack on the e5 pawn, uh, and Magnus goes back knight to d7. And now as this knight is still pinned, there is no uh, danger of losing the e5 pawn. So bishop e3 by Anand and now f6, uh, also another signature move of the Berlin, strengthening e5. And here there is one game in the database where queen d2 was played, but here we have queen to e2 by Anand uh, and it is as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So Magnus continues with queen e7 and both players castle queen side. So castles, castles uh, and now uh, two prophylactic moves in a row. King b1 followed by king to b8. So a bit of a, a bit of a mi mimicry going on uh, over here, uh, and here we have a very interesting knight c to d2, trying to trying to see uh, how Magnus will react to this. The the knight can be transferred maybe to f1 to g3 to f5. Uh, and so on, but uh, Magnus replies with bishop to b6 and Anand just goes back, knight to c4. He wants to trade knight for bishop, uh, but he doesn't want to trade uh, dark square bishop for dark square bishop uh, so, with, with something like this. So bishop back to c5, Magnus would of course enjoy a trade here so he can activate his queen. And now he's basically asking Anand, are you happy with a threefold repetition here and just getting a draw so we can take this into Armageddon with the same uh, repetition, uh, knight back to d2. Bishop b6, knight c4, bishop c5, knight cd2, and so on. However, Anand, of course, is not interested in squandering his white pieces, uh, you know, in, in, in less than 15 moves, so he goes for g4. Uh, we have bishop to f7 by Magnus, uh, and now knight f to d2. Now, if, of course, you capture here, uh, the knight can recapture. So knight to f8 by Magnus, the knight can now come to g6 and then to f4. f4 is a very nice outpost for, uh, for the knight. Uh, and f4 by white now. Uh, we have bishop captures on e3 by Magnus, queen captures and now knight to g6, putting pressure on the pawn here. And now f captures on e5. f5 is also a possibility, uh, but uh, uh, Anand has a different idea. So f captures, we have f captures and rook d to f1 now. Uh, he, he wants to double rooks uh, uh, along the f file as that's where all the game is going to, uh, going to happen. So bishop e6, getting the bishop out of the, uh, the open f file and now queen to g3. Uh, with a double attack on the pawn here, for the moment you don't really, you're not really threatening anything here because even if uh, black played something weird, you can't really capture because of this check and then you just lose a queen, so not really a threat right away, but it can be uh, at some point. So here we have rook h to f8, uh, Magnus just continues uh, developing and now uh, knight back to e3. Uh, so this knight is now coming to f5 and that is an excellent outpost for the knight. The f4 square on the other hand is an excellent outpost for the, uh, this knight. So here uh, queen to c5 first uh, before going for this uh, knight to f4 idea. Uh, Anand trades once along the f file, captures, captures and now uh, here uh, Anand goes knight to f5. Now he, this is one, one moment where the threat is actually stronger than the execution and he, he sort of falls into Carlsen's little trap that Carlsen set with this queen to c5 move. He plays the, the knight to f5 move uh, 
let's say a move uh one move too early uh so feel free to pause the video now and take advantage of this move with uh black while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you uh, that were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the, the cheapo mentioned in the title. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's Bishop Captures on A2. It's just a, a, a nicely grabbing a pawn. Point is, if you move King to C1, then you've just given up a pawn and uh, you can just, uh, let's say, play something like this, open up the King and uh, play, play, play uh, this kind of a game. So Anand uh, accepts the challenge, he plays King captures on A2, but now Queen A5 check and now you just win back your piece and you've uh, snatched a, a, a pawn clean. So uh, King B1 and uh, now Queen captures on B2. And now, uh, you, while you could capture on g7, it's not really worth it. For example, knight captures rook f2, and you already have a lot of problems here. Now you have to go into passivity with this rook, and you're, you're already uh, doing pretty pretty poorly. You don't want to play passive moves, and now uh, maybe just you know pushing here is sufficient to get the job done. So here, instead, Anand goes for h4. He wants to play h5, g5, and uh, try, try and make something happen there. Uh, hopefully get uh, an open h file for his rook. So Magnus goes for rook to f7. Now he defends it. He doesn't have to worry about his g7 pawn anymore, and h5. So knight to f4. Uh, this is an excellent square for the knight. And g5. Now going for this g6 uh, idea, and now a5. At some point, you want to start pushing this, so it does make sense. Uh, and here, uh, Anand could go for g6, let's say captures, captures, uh, and then uh, uh, let's say rook f8, not allowing any checks. And you don't want to capture right away because a rook here uh, just attacks the knight and after it moves you will be able to pick up the g6 pawn. But it is, uh, it is a very dynamic and interesting position and black constantly has to worry about this. However, Anand goes for knight to e3 instead. Uh, and now comes uh, uh, queen to b4 by Magnus. Again, you could play b5, a4 and start pushing like this, but Magnus has a different idea. Now, uh, a4, a3 is the plan and just checkmate on b2. So, of course, Anand has to worry about that. We have knight to c4 and a4. Magnus just wants to get this pawn as close as possible here. Uh, and here you could even capture the pawn on, a, uh, on e5. Uh, then we get a3, threatening checkmate. Knight moves back to defend and after captures you play this. It's not very pleasant, uh, but it is uh, sort of sort of playable. You will be able to kick away the queen with queen to e1 and uh, continue playing this. Uh, but Anand decided to go for g6 first. Uh, we have h captures, h captures, and now rook to f6 by Magnus uh, with a double attack on this pawn here. Uh, and here Anand uh, basically has no other choice. He should go for knight captures on, e, uh, on e5, as ugly as it is, followed by a3 and knight c4 to defend the checkmate. And after this, just go for this uh, endgame with queen to e1. So after this uh, gets traded off, rook captures on g6, king captures here. We get this endgame where Magnus has a passed g pawn. He is up a pawn, but it's also a double c pawn. So maybe maybe white will be able to hold this. However, Anand went for rook to h8 check. Uh, we have king to a7. And now, uh, now Anand uh, played queen to g4. And queen to g4, we reach the position from the thumbnail. As the knight covers this, there are some ideas of queen uh, c8 followed by queen to a8 checkmate. Uh, but there is a problem. This move uh, completely blunders the game. Uh, for the last time, feel free to pause the video and win the game for Magnus uh, while well, I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting uh, this beautiful mating sequence, although it's extremely difficult to find. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to e1 check. Of course, everyone thought of that move. What follows next is uh, the, the beauty of, of the idea. King a2 and now knight captures on d3. And now you don't really have any any options. If you, if you don't capture... Uh, the knight, there isn't uh, all that much you can play. Knight to c1 check is coming. Knight here is coming. B5, B5 is coming. You just uh, don't have the option of declining this knight. So c captures on d3. And now rook to f1. Threatening queen to a1 checkmate as the pawn covers the b3 square. And after king a3, just c5. Uh, taking away the b4 square from the king. Again, this will be checkmate. And there is no avoiding this. If you capture here, then queen b4 is checkmate. So you lose uh, however you put it. 
Uh, luckily for Anand, uh, Magnus misses the idea of queen e1 check followed by knight captures here, and instead Magnus goes for knight captures on g6. So by playing knight captures on g6, Magnus basically pre prepares the exact same idea, uh, queen e1 and uh, the rook to f1 next. Now he moved the, the knight so the rook can get into the action. Uh, however, this is not forced. It doesn't come with check. So Anand has the opportunity to play queen g1 check. Uh, and after, let's something, uh, something, something. Let's say rook c8. And the queen covers both of these squares. So there are no immediate threats here. And the white is doing well. However, Anand uh, missed the idea of knight to g6 and this whole uh, thing that could have happened a move sooner. Uh, and he goes for rook to e8. But now, uh, yes, again, he has a double attack on the pawn here. But now Magnus just goes for the exact same idea that we've discussed. So I'm not going to ask you to pause the video again. Magnus plays queen to e1 with check, king to a2, and now rook to f1. And now the same idea is being threatened and there is nothing to be done here. Uh, Anand tried king to a3, but Magnus just played c5, and it was in this position on move 38 that Vishwanathan Anand resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. We already shown how you uh, how, how you just cannot defend against queen a1 mate, and again, if this, then just this is checkmate. So yeah, after this uh, c5 move, Anand resigned and Magnus wins the match and he wins it before reaching Armageddon. So he uh, again gains the three full points. And since we haven't shown uh, any more games from round one, he also won his previous match against Giri. So Magnus on full uh, six points, but we are going to show more games from round two. Uh, and we are going to discuss uh, the standings then. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank McDuff Hughes, uh, David Turnbull, uh, Daniel Floyer, uh, Bryce Foster, and Ross Martin uh, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the uh, Chess 24 Legends of Chess, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.